Hi guys, good afternoon. Welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, and in today's video, I will be giving you my spoiler-filled film review for Captain America Civil War. I saw it last night, and boy, was it good. It was very, very good. Before I start blabbering on, of course, like I always do because I talk too much, uh, please be warned that this film review will be full of big, big spoilers from Captain America Civil War. Also, I may... Uh, inadvertently revealed massive spoilers for Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice as I will be making comparisons and similarities. So if you have not seen either Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice or Captain America Civil War, do not keep watching this video as I will be discussing spoilers for both movies, big spoilers, and once you do see both films or at least one of them, come on back and give it a watch and a listen. So let the record show you have been warned. That being said, very, very good movie. Very good movie. And a lot of surprises too. There are a lot of things that surprised me, not in a negative way, but just really, huh, I guess they didn't go that route because we've all been speculating who was going to die or if somebody was going to die. I had a feeling it wasn't going to be either Iron Man or Captain America simply because both actors have contracts to appear in uh, three Avenger movies. And of course, the third Avenger movie is going to be split into two parts, the Infinity Wars movies. Uh, so I knew neither one of them were going to bite it. However, if Captain America was going to die like he does in the comic version, I'm sure they could bring him back as a flashback hallucination or whatever in Infinity Wars. But anyway, they didn't actually kill anybody. At least they didn't kill any of the superhero characters. You know, a lot of people took a lot of beatings. Uh, you know, the Iron Man and Captain America really pounded on each other with Winter Soldier in the mix. Uh, the airport battle, everybody uh, took a pound in from one another. Nobody was trying to kill anybody because, they're, you know, Iron Man's team is trying to bring in Captain America and his team because they're considered criminals now because of this new uh, law that's been signed by the United Nations called the so Sokovia Accords, named after the, uh, of course, named after the events after Age of Ultron. Because right after that, in another incident in Nigeria, that's when the government, the free world said, okay, enough is enough. No more collateral damage. You know, these guys have got to be controlled. These superheroes are out of control. They need to, you know, they need restrictions. They can't just do whatever they feel like. And, you know, so it's like the world finally said enough is enough. You know, I think everybody had had it pretty much up to here with the superheroes. Because even though Secretary of State, uh, good old Gen General Thunderbolt Ross... Uh, from the Incredible Hulk, uh, who's the Secretary of State now, he even explains that the world owes the Avengers an unpayable debt because they have saved the Earth so many times on numerous occasions. Most people see them as heroes, but some would call them vigilantes. And that's when the world is, says enough is enough. We can't have these people running around anymore, at least unsupervised. And that's what causes our rift between our characters. Now, getting back to the major death thing... Um, the only one, I guess technically there was a big death, but I wouldn't say it was a major character because, you know, they did a pretty good job building him up in Winter Soldier, and I thought we would see so much more of him in Civil War, and I was very surprised that they killed him off so fast. The opening fight scene with Captain America and the Avengers on a mission hunting crossbones aka rumlow the former shield agent uh, who is the sleeper hydra agent the guy who got badly scarred in winter soldier now dons the appropriate costume and goes by the name of crossbones leading a terrorist group uh you know he's in the movie he and captain america duke it out for a few minutes and then he goes out via suicide bomber style and I was very surprised that he was willing to kill himself like that. Perhaps it's because he wanted to take as many innocent people with him as possible while killing Captain America. So Captain America would die having innocent people's blood on his hands. But then fortunately, Scarlet Witch is able to contain the blast of his uh, explosive device on his chest, throws him in the air, and instead of throwing him up like a rocket, she loses control and shifts him into the side of a building, which is what kills 11 people, which is the pushing, which is the breaking point for the United Nations saying, okay, enough is enough. These superheroes have got to be controlled. And so I was just very surprised that they killed Crossbone so fast. I thought he was going to have a much bigger presence in the movie than he did, but I guess not. You know, if you're going to have a movie which the primary focus is on tension and conflict between two superheroes and two different groups of superheroes, 
there's really not enough room for multiple villains, which is why Baron Zemo was the only villain in this movie. And I thought it was really interesting how unlike most villains who are out to take over or destroy the Earth, this guy's motives were entirely different. He wasn't interested in world domination or anything like that. He simply wanted revenge against the Avengers because it turns out he was a former... Uh, you know, he was a former Hydra, he was a former um, Sokovian special ops uh, guy, and um, he did a lot of digging uh, through Hydra's files after Black Widow released everything after Winter Soldier. He found out uh, everything he wanted to know about Winter Soldier, used his uh, trigger words to make him uh, comply with him, which was uh, kind of a creepy scene, but also kind of cool how he says these random words, which makes Bucky snap to attention. And his motives were that his family died during the Battle of Sokovia during Age of Ultron, and he simply wanted to destroy the the Avengers from inside out, from within, as he put it. And uh, that's what led to this conflict between Iron Man and Captain America to the Sovia, the, so the Sokovia Accords. So uh, you know there was there was all that. Something else that also surprised me was Black Panther's motivations in the movie. I thought because of the destruction done during Age of Ultron when Hulk briefly lost control thanks to Scarlet Witch and Tony Stark is forced to fight him in the Hulkbuster armor and that fight takes place in the Wakandan city, I thought that's why the people of Wakanda, Black Panther and his father, would be in favor for the Sokovia Accords. See, I thought that's why they would be Team Iron Man. But it turns out that uh, they lost a number of civilians in uh, Lagos where uh, the opening scene takes place with Crossbones blowing himself up. There are a lot of Wakandan civilians there, which is what made the King of Wakanda and his son, Black Panther, want to join you know, the Sokovia Accords thing. So that also surprised me. It surprised me that nobody really mentioned that particular fight scene uh, from Age of Ultron. They did refer to the Battle of Sokovia, which was the bigger one with way more collateral damage, which makes a lot more sense. Uh, something else that surprised me was, uh, what was it? Was the Crossbones? Yeah, Crossbones dying. And then uh, the other thing that surprised me was that, um, that really threw me off because it's like, okay, Towards the end of the movie, Tony Stark figures out the truth. It wasn't Bucky, because Bucky is implicated in the UN bombing, which kills the King of Wakanda, which sets Black Panther on a road to vengeance and makes the world distrust superheroes even more. You know, uh, Tony figures out it wasn't Bucky who did it, but it was indeed Zemo. And when he goes off to find uh, Captain America and Winter Soldier, who are at the Siberian facility where these other super soldiers are being kept, because they're led to believe Zemo wants to like uh, reincarnate, like uh, resurrect them and uh, bring them back to life to do God knows what kind of unbelievable damage. Uh, which is not the case. He actually wanted to find them to kill them because his real motivation was getting Iron Man and, and uh, Captain America to fight and hopefully kill each other. Because Zemo provokes and pushes Tony over the edge by showing him the surveillance footage of when his parents were killed by the Winter Soldier uh, almost uh, 25 years ago. His parents were on the way to the airport and their deaths were faked to look like a car crash. But in reality, Bucky killed them and of course i'm like oh that's the pushing point that's what makes these two fight is when tony stark flips out and he tries to kill bucky forcing captain america to interfere and that's when they start pounding and wailing on each other because at first i'm like well if tony knows the truth and he knows that winter soldier had nothing to do with anything and you know they have this little truce thing going on why do they start fighting and then sure enough zemo as a as the main focus of his plot his plan shows tony the footage of his parents being killed by bucky and that's what makes all three of them pound and wail on each other and uh it was a tough fight scene to watch it was very unsettling unsettling because it was very unfortunate to watch these two characters who have fought side by side together in both avenger films the relationship was never perfect it was a bit rocky but then just to see them just pound and wail on each other as cool as it was it was kind of unsettling as well because you're seeing these two great superheroes who are technically on the same side but with different ideologies and a way to approach and handle things and they just pound and wail on each other. And I thought for sure, oh, in terms of major deaths, I thought Winter Soldier or Black Widow 
was going to bite it. That was my best guess. Neither one of them did. You know, uh, Winter Soldier lost his metal arm, but that was a non-fatal injury because technically that was just chopping off a piece of metal attached to his body. So I can't imagine it would even hurt that bad. I'm sure it hurt, just not that bad. But uh, overall, great movie. Great movie. Um, I do need to see it again because when I walked away from it, I really, really liked it, but I didn't love it like I thought I would. I guess what also kind of threw me off, and I'm sure I'm going to get heat for this from fanboys on both sides, uh, at least the hardcore ones, but there are so many similarities between this movie and Batman v Superman, and what's driving me crazy is how people just hated on Batman v Superman so much, critics and fans alike, mostly critics moreover than fans, but mostly critics. And yet they're eating up Civil War like it's cotton candy, like it's a cinematic masterpiece, which it isn't, and neither is Batman v Superman. By no means is neither movie a perfect, truly cinematic, artful masterpiece. They're both fun, exciting superhero movies, which is what they're meant and supposed to be. What bothers me is why people are giving Civil War such like two thumbs up and people are just constantly trashing Batman v Superman. By no means a perfect film, but it did not deserve all of the unnecessary hatred and just the constant putting down that it keeps receiving. You know, it wasn't perfect, but it wasn't that bad. Even people who didn't like it that much said it didn't deserve all the hate. And then people are just praising Civil War. It's just, it bothers me, the hypocrisy of movie fans and fanboys. And I'm not one to talk either. I'm not one to judge. I'm a huge hypocrite. I'm a fanboy and a hypocrite. But I guess it just bothers me seeing all the similarities between both films. I can still enjoy both of them but I do need to see this one again because I really really liked it and I want to watch it again maybe I'll like it more a second time now my favorite part of the movie the highlight for me was the airport battle love the airport battle oh my god spider-man Tom Holland wow Tom Holland ladies and gentlemen well done that was a great performance I've got complete confidence in him that he is going to be an excellent spider-man and I can't wait to see him in his own solo movie and hopefully he'll appear in infinity war as well it's very very exciting so well done spider-man well done tom holland the airport battle was really the highlight of the movie for me personally i mean it wasn't as unsettling as the brutal fist fight between uh, captain america and iron man towards the end of the film but uh it was it was entertaining enough to watch all these former allies fight each other for a little bit nobody wanted to kill anybody they just wanted to stop the other ones from completing what they were supposed to do you know team iron man was like we got to stop Captain America from being criminals and Captain America's team is like no we're individual people we've got a job to do to prove that this man is innocent Winter Soldier and uh, Ant-Man turning into a gigantic uh, a giant man I believe uh, the term is uh, that was very very cool and uh, Spider-Man um, basically using the move from Empire Strikes Back while spewing the pitch to both War Machine and Iron Man is like you guys remember that scene in Empire Strikes Back and he's going around the legs already and then they both get the idea and they both fly up to Ant-Man and punch him in the face causing him to topple over very very cool I love that part that was my favorite part of the movie was the airport battle and I will see the movie probably one or two more times because uh, I really liked it, but also for that scene alone. So uh, those are my thoughts and feels on it. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did, if not more so. Thank you so much for watching this episode review episode review <laughs> force of habit film review here on the edward don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more film reviews like this one check out my facebook page in the description down below what did you guys think of the movie did you love it did you hate it did you think it was great unnecessary please leave your thoughts and opinions and your feedback down below and as usual, let's please be respectful and civil of one another's beliefs and opinions, of course. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Captain America Civil War in theaters right now. Go see it. It's worth your time. All right, guys. Have a great one. And of course, until next time, may the force be with you.